Hi, welcome to the Jeff and Jerry Show. My name is Jeff. I'm the borough manager and my co-host. Jerry Lucia, mayor of Mount Pleasant. Jerry, I always bring us up at almost every show about the different settings we have. I don't think we've ever been on an altar in the past. No, this 300 is and some the shows. closest we got to God <laughs> yeah, for a long yeah, time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, I kind of feel a little holy here and blessed yeah. that we're up here. But um, uh, we are at a... At a uh, I call it an iconic church in town because Very of the much. town clock. Mm -hmm. uh, for years and years and years, uh, I don't think a lot of people realized it was the Methodist church. No, it was the it town was clock. The town clock church. Yeah. And a lot of times people, when they come into town, obviously they see the doughboy and they see Veterans Wall. But the town clock is sort of... The it's, town clock. It's owned, you know, it's sort of recognized by the town as a symbol of the town. It sure is. And, and everyone knows you use it as a uh, landmark. Yes. You know, right off the bat. Yes. You know. And you also use it to check your time. Uh, yes. You know, <laughs> when you're driving, because you always look at the clock. Especially when you and I are late a few minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we told them to set it back a little bit. I did, we did tell everybody to do that here. But, um, as, as a lot of churches uh, in today's uh, world, um, um, preachers, clergymen come and go, and uh, we're here today to talk to a new, uh, a new clergyman for town, speci specifically for the Methodist Church here. Well, we thought it would be a good idea. He's, he's so new. It's been several weeks now, yeah. Yeah. and I wanted the public to be introduced to him, and uh, that way... Uh, everyone knows who Reverend Bob will be. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, now, you know, when we did the show up at... Uh, the church, the church, church service. Yeah. How mm -hmm. many Reverend Bobs were up there? Oh, there was... Uh, right? There was, yeah, four there was, I think it was three or four out of five or six, yeah. and now there's going to be more. Uh-huh, right. So all we're going to do is just say Reverend Bob, and then we'll get everybody's attention. I think the Lord looked down, and if your name was Bob, <laughs> you were going to be a reverend. <laughs> well, let's, how about he introduces himself? Sure. Reverend? Well, my name is, uh, is Bob Elson. I am the, uh, the pastor here at the uh, United Methodist Church of Mount Pleasant, and uh, it is absolute joy and uh, privilege to, to be here, be a part of this community and a part of this congregation. So, Jerry, you met him when? Uh, I met him a week ago. Okay. And, uh, uh, I, I talked with, uh, I came down and we met and we went and had lunch and that way we got to know each other, and, right. and I was able to express Mount Pleasant inner workings to Reverend Bob. So he, he, he had a good feel of the town, you know. Okay. And uh, I, I've even offered to take him around different places, like we're going to go to the senior citizens uh, someday and sure. meet the people down there. Sure. Um, he, he's very impressed with Mount Pleasant. And you come from an area that's similar to Mount Pleasant in a lot of ways. Uh, Reverend Bob comes from the export area. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's talk about his background. Yeah, we'll let Reverend Bob talk well, about it. Well, we'll, we'll ask you some questions. Yeah. You so your family, I always like to start that far back. Your family is from where? Well, we're, we're Philadelphia natives, uh, but I've lived in the Pittsburgh area since uh, 1970. We moved into, into the Pittsburgh region. And we've lived in the Murraysville export area uh, since about that time. And your family's background, your father and mother, did they work in that area or, or did they come out here because of work? It was because of work. And actually, you know, I am somewhat familiar uh, with the Mount Pleasant area. I used to work. Uh, I'm a second career pastor and uh, I worked in industry, uh, systems design and so forth. And so I was actually very engaged with industry in this area in years past, the glass industry and other manufacturing that was in the Mount Pleasant region. So uh, familiar with the area from that standpoint. So systems design, uh, an engineering background or more of the uh, technology background? We worked in, uh, in combustion systems, heat processing systems. So uh, my, uh, my father and I worked together in a small family business for a number of years, and we, uh, we uh, developed systems for uh, uh, heat generation, for glass uh, melting and annealing, and, 
and uh, and so forth. So it was fun. Yeah, it was a, it was a fun fun business to be in. And yeah, a good so time. it's kind of a, a niche business too, I think, isn't Very it? Very much so. Yeah, sort of a specialized kind of thing. And so, from that standpoint, you know, I, I work with a lot of the manufacturers in this region, uh, and in and specifically in the Mount Pleasant area. So you then. Uh, met your, uh, you went to college, I guess, in, in the Philadelphia area and, and then came out here? No, uh, you know, was in, it went through high school at Franklin Regional. Okay, uh, so that far back in, then. In the, in the 70s and um, uh, met my wife there. We are high school sweethearts uh, that got married. My, my father uh, still calls it a high school fling that'll never last. But that's, uh, <laughs> All fathers are that 30, way though. 35 years of marriage and <laughs> so, uh, no, we're, but I met my wife in, in high school and, uh, and got married and have lived and worked in the region since. Children? Children, two kids. I have a, I, actually three now, I should say. I have uh, a well, daughter. Well, congratulations. Well, I have a daughter who's uh, 30, uh, lives up in the Delmont area. Uh, my son is uh, uh, 27, lives in the Regent uh, Square area of Pittsburgh. And uh, he got married about uh, six or seven weeks ago, so I now have a daughter-in-law. Good. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. So now that takes you up through uh, high school, and uh, you went to, when, when did you decide to go into uh, being a pastor? Well, I, it was about 10 years ago. Um, you know, I had a, I had a good, uh, good business career. I enjoyed what I did. Um, went to school uh, for both undergraduate and graduate work in business. And, uh, you know, and it, as I said, I really enjoyed what I did. Um, but about 10 years ago, and I've always been active in the church, very, um, very active, both my wife and I and my family have always been active in the church. And about 10 years ago, um, you know, I was feeling a, a sense um, uh, not necessarily of discontentment, but a sense that I, I wasn't where God wanted me to be. Um, despite uh, everything going well, um, I just, I wasn't, uh, I felt that I wasn't fulfilling, uh, you know, God's specific call into my life. And um, so long story short, I was on a, a business trip in Philadelphia at, at one point. I was worshiping at uh, Washington Memorial Chapel in Valley Forge on an Ash Wednesday. And it was during that service that I, you know, I felt God's call into ministry, and um, I ignored it for a while. And uh, but then some years later, um, you know, God came, came knocking again, and I said, "Okay, let's do it, let's do it." So I, I left my employment and uh, started seminary, and and here I am. And this is the story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The story, yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I, I guess I, I you hear that when we talk to other pastors and other clergymen about the calling. But I guess it's just something that you feel inside of you, I guess, right? Well, it is. Uh, you know, not to over-spiritualize it, but, um, you know, I think God does speak to us in, in real tangible ways, and uh, uh, even today. And uh, at that moment, um, in, in that particular place, I, I, I heard God's voice say, you know, Bob, I, I got some other plans for you. Hmm. And uh, so I said, and okay. Of course, your wife has to uh, go along with you. <laughs> she probably thought, uh, this is different. But, uh, yeah, uh, I would think, yeah. How did your family react to the calling? Uh, well, obviously very in a very positive way. My wife yeah, and I have I been uh, partners in ministry. No matter what we do, we do it together. Uh, we have always... Uh, serve the church in both, uh, uh, you know, our unique ways, but also together. And this is just another part of our journey together uh, in ministry. So I, I don't consider this to be a solo journey in any way. Uh, you know, she's, she's uh, my, my partner in ministry, and I'm her partner in ministry as well. I, I try and, and help her, uh, you know, fulfill her unique and specific calling in ministry as well. So this is, we're in this together. Yeah. Well, this church has had uh, a lot over the years they've had a lot of ministers and uh, they've all been good ministers mm -hmm. and, and they kept the congregation they have been yes together yeah. as a family yeah the the methodist system we are we are uh, referred to as itinerant uh, pastors we work in an itinerancy system so we are um, we are appointed to churches by our bishop and um, every year uh, the, those, uh, the, the, those appointments are reviewed, and pastors are moved to different churches as a part of, uh, as a part of our Methodist system, our itinerant system. And um, so, you know, pastors can, can come and go into a congregation. You know, good and bad with that, right? Uh, you know, th there's some, some good in that um, uh, a congregation uh, gets to hear and, and different voices, 
and different thoughts and different ideas. You don't become stagnant. At the same time, you know, some people would prefer that a pastor stay longer term because they become you know, comfortable with that person and, and so on and so forth. So it's not a perfect system, but it's our system. And, uh, well, I think most of, most of the religions have that system, don't they? To some extent. To I some extent. Do. Yeah, the Methodist system is specifically referred to as an itinerancy type of, of system. So at any point, any one of us could be called uh, to, to another appointment, or the bishop could say, you know, I, I need to fit you into this other church, and we're, we're required to go at that point. Where was your last uh, mission? I, I served, I have uh, served for the last several years as the associate pastor at the uh, First United Methodist Church in Murraysville, uh, which has been that's a real a blessing. It's a, it's a good sized congregation, and the blessing is that that's the church that uh, Jill and I have been attending uh, for the last uh, nearly 30 years. So I am you know, what is often referred to as a, um, a pew to pulpit story. Yeah. And um, so to, to begin my ministry in that setting with people that um, were you know, close and dear to us was just a real privilege. And I, was, it, was it tough, though? Was it, was it tough to make that change from the pew to the pulpit? It, it, it was hard. I used to kid and, and say, you know, I felt very uncertain going into this role, obviously. And I often felt... Uh, said kiddingly, I, I'd rather go fail anonymous, anonymously right, somewhere right. as opposed to in front of my friends. Um, but uh, but then again, your friends probably supported you too. Supportive, so, very supportive. Yep. So you had you had a you know friends supporting you and probably other people maybe yeah. jealous maybe. It Who was knows? I, yeah no it was a it was a, a totally loving welcoming environment they they supported me they, they essentially that church is is who launched me into into ministry in fact the first step in our process uh, to becoming an ordained clergy is you you have to get the approval of the uh, of our church council at the local church level in other words the local church has to say yes we believe that this person is worthy to move into ministry you don't get past if you don't get that approval you don't get past step one so the, the affirmation in, in the ministry starts with the local church. Yeah. So it was a great experience, wonderful experience. So that brought you to here. Yes. And, and so now this is only the second church you've been to. This is, this is uh, my first appointment as senior pastor. Yes. In, okay. Into, into a church. And so no, you uh, have to call the shots. have to call the, 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 uh, the safety net has been uh, pulled away. Yeah. That's right. There's no one, uh, no one above me. I can push problems to now. Yeah. So. <laughs> Has it? Is it a? Is it a? Um, a big change, or is it something that you have groomed yourself for? You know, the, the United Methodist process, um, you know, takes years to get through, and and part of that is is the process of development and learning and growing and so forth. So really. Um, by the time you get to this point, uh, there's a comfort level. And uh, sure, there's, there's things that are very different, but uh, you know, the, the, the teaching and the training and the time I've spent in the church in the last several years from a ministry uh, perspective, along with, I'll say, from my business background, you know, there's, the, there's an organizational structure here and, and there are some similarities in how any structure works. And so I, you know, I have the, the uh, uh, you know, I'm able to apply some of actually my, my business background and skills into the environment too. So. I feel very comfortable. Well, you have to be the manager. You have to be a manager. You and have to yeah. be ready for yeah. your Sunday uh, uh, yep. service. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. Through the week, you have to lay everything out. You do. You, you have, have to be organized. That you have That's, to right. With. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. I'm sure it's fulfilling. Yeah. I'm sure it is. It is. What's the hardest part, though? What's the hardest part of having your own parish, your own church? Well, you know, the, the most difficult part is um, this uh, overwhelming desire to, to move the church forward and reach into the community and make an impact in the community. There's such a desire in, in my heart and the heart of the people here uh, to be as much as we possibly can, uh, you know, into the community and, and uh, you know, uh, people of faith that are, that are called to engage the, engage the world, engage the community around us. So the hardest part is uh, to, to be everything that we can be uh, into, the, into the community and to impact lives. So when you arrived here, I'm sure you were welcomed, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Very much so. Um, but what's some of the um, 
other than you climbing up to the town clock and fixing it every every uh, once in a while. <laughs> We, did, Other than uh, we actually climbed, <laughs> we climbed the tower the first night we were here. My wife did it in high heels. And oh, well, then she, 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 I, I got to meet her because I've been, of, I've been up there. A lot of points on that one. I've we been up to, there, yeah, so yeah, that's, yeah. that's tough. Yes, yes. But um, I'm sure you had an idea of what you wanted to do. Mm -hmm. and, and have you achieved those so far? Is that a work in progress? Oh, my. It'll be, you know, a, a, a many, many year a work in progress. Um, you know, the church is um, in, a, in a period of change right now, uh, you know, nationally. Uh, it, is, it is no longer a, uh, a cultural expectation to be a part of a church, right? And, um, you know, during the time when, when it was culturally expected for people to go to church on Sunday, it was easy for churches in, in many ways. People came. And uh, you didn't have to really do too much or say too much. They were here because they felt they were supposed to be here. Well, those days are gone. Uh, it's no longer a cultural expectation. And I don't see that as a bad thing. Because I believe what it has done is it has forced the church to re-examine yeah. itself. And to reinvent itself. Reinvent itself and, and to, um, to become relevant again to... to um, you know, to, to take the, the, the message and the word and the purpose and the mission and the goals out into the community to be relevant in people's lives. Do you think the church is, we sit inside of a structure mm -hmm. called a church, mm -hmm. but really it should be outside the walls too. Yeah. And it should be, it should be more encompassing, like you said, the community. Right. right. So, I guess you have, that's one of your missions, to try to do that, right? Absolutely. And yeah. so do you have any thoughts about your plans for that kind of stuff and your vision for this church and how it, do you have any ideas that you want to share? Yeah, those are, you know, those are being worked on right now. Actually, we have a, we have a program uh, coming up on um, September 17th. It's a, we call it a, a, our Back to Church Initiative. It's, a, it's sort of a national initiative that's being uh, promoted by uh, a service, a national service organization, but it's called Back to Church Sunday. And uh, on the 17th, on September 17th, uh, we're going to have some promotional information that'll be around around town, and we're in the process of um, of uh, renovating some space uh, behind us here in a fellowship hall, creating a, a, a fellowship a, a space for people to meet and gather before church um, to get our message out into the community and so forth, and. Um, we need, we need to engage the community. We cannot be insular. This is not the church. This is a church that's building. Right, that's right. But this is not, this is not the church. And, and that, again, that's another uh, thing that has changed for us. We, the, in years past, the expectation where people were going to come into our room, into our space, come in our front doors, and they're not doing that anymore. And we, so we have to go out. We have to go out into the community, not with the goal of getting people to come in here you know obviously we don't want to see the church grow i think there's a there's a vital place in our world and in our community for the church uh, but um but the goal cannot be to just increase membership uh, the goal has to be to uh, engage people's lives and um do you think that's a society change though because everybody seems to be and i know uh, this is so overused but everybody says they're busy um, and I, and you can say, you know, you don't, you don't have an hour and a half a week mm -hmm. to go to church, yeah. but do you think it's just a society change? And do you think the church is, is trying to accommodate that kind of a change? And that's been the philosophy move, moving out of the building and doing more outreach. Well, it is, it's a cultural, it's a cultural change, um, you know, and, and it, it's a cultural on a number of levels, not just a matter of time or, or say lack of time that people have, but we've become um, a very individualistic in our society. So even people of faith, many people of faith have come to the point where they say, I have mine, you know, I have my relationship with, with God. Um, why do I need the church? And the fact is that, you know, the, the, purpose of, of church on Sunday morning is, is worship. It's not about us. See, it's us giving up ourselves. It's us giving up what we want for an hour and coming in and saying, we're here to worship God. We're giving of ourselves. We're giving up of what we want, something bigger than ourselves. 
And unfortunately, in our culture today, uh, the cultural message is, you know, so much it is about us, what we want, what we want to do, and so forth. So we can't change that message, but we, ha we have to be realistic as well. We, you know, sports teams meet now on Sunday mornings and so on and mm. so forth. So it, it does force the church into some change. Yeah. Well, Jerry, we talked much about families, too. I mean, we try to do a lot of things. Keep it, and, every, and, and, and you'll see that when Jerry and I work on projects, mm -hmm. I think family community is probably the two things we focus on right off the bat. Yeah. Uh, when, when we do a program, we always look at the family aspect of it. Mm -hmm. like Jerry, the glass festival. Right. Mm -hmm. We do entertainment for the family. family. Mm -hmm. We don't just have a rock band. Right. You know, we right. have right. Uh, bands that all generations can, right. can enjoy. And enjoy. Right. And activities. Because if there's one overriding factor I think he and I share in is the, is the core family I think if you start there, right. everything else falls into place a lot easier. I, I would agree. I think that the challenge we have uh, with today is we have to um, uh, redefine family. Uh, family looks very different uh, now than, than what we envisioned 20, sure. 30, 40 years ago. Sure. So a family can be a uh, you know, grandmother and grandchild. A family can be a you know, single mom with three children. And, so, and we have to, the church has to acknowledge that and, and know that each of those family structures have very unique needs that they're wrestling with in their lives. And that's where the church and the pastor can help. Exactly. Um, you know, we have, a, we have Rick, who has a great family. Yeah. And, I'm call, and I'm using him as an example. Right. Because when you see Rick and his family, you say to yourself, there's an ideal family. Yeah. You know? Right. So, if... if Anybody can help that situation, and we can do more of the Rick Fike family type of things. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 and don't be embarrassed, but I'm just telling the truth. I, I just I think that starts a better community, which starts a better town. Telling, which yeah, I was telling Reverend Bob this. I, I know a lot of the people from church here, mm -hmm. and I was here several weeks ago for a service, and I looked out, and there were families. Yeah. The grandchildren. Right, right. And Is there anything better than that, Jerry? There's nothing better than that. Yeah, yeah. Or even the playgrounds to see mother, father playing with the children. Or the, or the grandmother sometimes bringing up the grandchild because the mother and father are working and the grandmother and the grandfather is babysitting. There's nothing better than that. And I think, um, I think if the church can help that, right. all the churches, whether it's Methodist or Catholic or Protestant, that is a good start for us, for this country. But I want to take another couple of questions sure. before we, because I'm not sure what time we have left for the show, but technology. Technology has taken over a lot of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, iPhones and smartphones, I mean, we didn't have those not too long ago. But today, you almost can't live without it, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. How does technology fit into the church? Well, there's, there's lots of different ways. You know, in, in today's uh, culture, again, as we said, not everyone can come to church every Sunday. Uh, we're not as connected as we were from a church standpoint. So the church, again, instead of assuming that everyone is coming in, that we're, we're pulling, in a sense, people to hear for a message, what we have to do is we have to use technology to push, to push the message out more. And there are many ways to do that. There are tools that allow us to put... Uh, messages out. Uh, we can we can uh, uh, download uh, messages on the smartphones and computers and so forth, so people can go online anytime they want to to hear a message or a, or a liturgy of some sort. So it's the idea of, of of pull and push is really what it boils down to. It, you know, years past we we pulled. Everyone was pulled in, and and heard everything here. Well, that doesn't happen as much anymore. So we <coughs> have to push out. We have to use technology to push the message out into the community as well. Reach and there are many. Out. Reach out and touch them. Right, and 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 that's that's okay. You know, it's it's you know the 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 important thing is to is to get the word out, to get the message out, to to engage people and touch them in their lives where they are. The assumption that everyone has to be here on a Sunday just is not realistic anymore. I'd love it, but it's not realistic anymore. But even sitting in here, <laughs> I, um, and Jerry and I uh, attended one of the services about a month ago. Yeah. When, when Reverend uh, Randy. 
Randy, mm -hmm. right, yep. we came. Yep. Um, the technology and the, and the TV screens, yeah. it did make it a little bit easier, didn't it, Jerry? Did you yeah. feel? It's really good. It does, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you could follow it a little bit better. Yeah. Not that you can't follow it without them, but it just made it easier, yeah. I thought. And it made, it made it probably a little bit more comfortable. Well, the, that was a good technology change. Yeah. You know? yeah. Well, yeah. For years, the, the church said, you know, you, you do it our way. And the culture has pushed back and said, yeah, not anymore. Um, you, you have to do it our way. And, you know, we can either, you know, hole up and, and die a slow death, or we can, you know, engage the culture where they are and, uh, and live. We got uh, three or four minutes left. Um, I'm sure you have plans, mm -hmm. your vision for this church. Sure. Um, you want to share some of it right now? Well, again, it's not my vision. It's, it's our vision. Okay. Um, I have um, been able to uh, connect with our, our church council and worship team people in amazing ways. There is a, there is a pent up energy in this church that is ready to be released. And um, we are already working together on plans to, uh, again, for September 17th to create this um, you know, plan to move out into the community. We're renovating. Uh, some space that hasn't been used for many years as a social gathering space, a teaching space, uh, beyond again, for Sunday morning and beyond. And uh, uh, Jerry and I, you know, we spoke at lunch about uh, practical ways uh, to engage the community in teaching and in helping, you know, financial management, uh, budgeting kind of training and yeah. things along those lines, ways to really impact the community in that way. So yeah, lots of good plans going on and, and this church, uh, these are good people that want to make a, a, a difference in this community. Yeah. I know a lot of people watch and listen to the show. Um, all churches welcome everybody. Mm -hmm. You don't have to actually be a member of the church to go and share right. uh, masses at churches. So if somebody wanted to come here, see this beautiful church, listen to your message, um, what, what's the hours of the church? And they can just, I'm sure they can just walk right in there, feel welcomed. At any point, we have, um, on the 17th, we will be launching a new a small group ministry program that will meet at 845 on Sunday mornings. So a, a, ser a number of small groups uh, for, for study and, and for learning together and just sharing life together. Uh, they'll meet from 845 to 930. On Sunday mornings at 9.30, we have a fellowship time, uh, uh, just a half hour of meeting together, coffee, cookies, that kind of thing, get to know each other. Well, Jeff will be there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, well, I might have to sample the cookies, you know. I'm sort of the... Uh... Yeah. And then at 10 o'clock, we have worship. So 10, 10 to 11 is worship. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah couple minutes left. Um, anything you want to share with us before we close the show? No, I just, I really appreciate this opportunity. You know, I, I, I believe uh, in spite of uh, some significant cultural changes, the, the church has a, a place in, in this world and in this community. And uh, the world uh, needs the church. And the church needs the, the world, too, needs the community, you know? One last question. Give me one impression about Mount Pleasant that when you came here that sticks in your mind forever. Yeah, you know, family. I mean, you, you said it earlier. This, is, this, this, is, this town is a family. I, I see it in my own congregation, and I see it in the community. This is a family that, that uh, cares for each other and loves each other, uh, fights with each other, just like every family, right? And, 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 uh, and, and probably not much different than the people from Murraysville, but probably a little different. I mean, the communities are much different. Sure. Um, so we probably are a little different from where you came from, I would think, or, or we're pretty much all the same. No, no, obviously every community has its own personality, and this one has a unique personality as well. Murraysville tends to be a little bit more of a isolated type of community, whereas my sense is in, in Mount Pleasant, it's, it's a much more of a connected a family environment, frankly. Yeah. Well, Jerry, we're done with this. We're out of time, and it went pretty fast today. Well, it did. <laughs> glad that the public is uh, able to meet uh, uh, Reverend Bob and uh, come on down to the church anytime you want to. Anytime. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, as many times as we do a show and meet new people coming into town because we try to introduce them to the community and, 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 and sort of the surrounding area. Um, it is kind of it is kind of good when we have new people come in like Reverend Bob. Uh, they seem to fit right in, huh? Well, yeah. It's going to make us even better, you know.
next year needed. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully the public will get a very good impression of everything here today for the show. And so for Jeff, Jerry, and Reverend Bob, thanks for watching and listening to the Jeff and Jerry Show, and we'll see you next time.